This is why we're going to get rid of Zoom Corp. It's not a casual place, right? It's a I'm place. Ma'am, stop unmuting yourself. Stop unmuting yourself. It, it just appears to me that with the court speaking about that, you would stop unmuting yourself. Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have two clips for you today from Judge Lanise Bryant at Michigan's 36th District Court. Judge Bryant has a little bit of a rough day today, and she goes off in epic fashion. The first clip is of a woman who keeps unmuting herself, which really angers Judge Bryant. And then the second clip is of an older gentleman who's been on probation and actually had probation extended, and he has done nothing on probation. So I'll let you guys be the judge. Have a great day. Stay safe. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Today's my birthday. I made it. I mean, who is saying that? Who, who would say that on my Zoom, on the court's Zoom? Can somebody explain that to me? Nobody has an explanation. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll that's so disrespectful me. and rude. I, I can't imagine. This is why we're going to get rid of Zoom court. It's not a casual place, right? It's a I'm place muting, of Ma'am, stop unmuting yourself. Stop unmuting yourself. It, it just appears to me that with the court speaking about that, you would stop unmuting yourself. Miss Brooks, have a great day and stay safe. Can Miss Flemings please start your video camera? itself. There it is. My microphone keeps muting. Ma'am, stop. 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 Miss Flemings, please remain muted. Just remain muted until the court allows you to mute. But why are I've said that no less than four times. No less than four times I have said to stop unmuting yourself. No less than four times. No less. All right. I am ready on brown. I'm ready on brown. I am ready on brown. What I know for sure is that I speak English. Miss Ritter speaks English. We both speak the same language. When Miss Ritter said stop unmuting, it was the same language that I was speaking when I said stop unmuting. And all of a sudden, Miss Flemings has stopped unmuting. Let me say this to everybody, news flash. This is my courtroom. And when I speak, that's what is the, the word of the day. So I don't know why you decided you need to listen to Miss Ritter, but let's just be clear. Ma'am, stop making all those faces. Stop making all those faces. Ms. Ritter, I'm going to let you go back to the way to, to the breakout room with your witness because we're not going to proceed today like this and she's going to stop. Yes, Judge. She's going to stop. Sir, have a seat. We'll be with you shortly. This is case number uh, 1858995015, the people versus Dwight Elliott Little. Defendant is charged with one count of um, controlled substance illegal use. Today is the day set for review, Ms. Stevenson. Janice Stevenson appearing on behalf of Mr. Dwight Elliott Little. Mr. Little, sir, please say your full name. Dwight Elliott Little. All right. Um, today is a day set for review. I don't like what I see. This is an old case. Uh, he was probation was reinstated in September. He's done nothing. This is horrible. 
This is unacceptable. Probation has not been able to get in touch with him. It is my uh, thought to revoke his probation and sentence him to jail. Ms. Stevenson? I would ask the court not to do that, Your Honor. Um, right. And I, um, because Mr. Dwyer, excuse me, Your Honor, because Mr. Little, if nothing else has presented himself as he was ordered to do by the court. Um, I did today in person. Um, I hold checked. On we have this. Mr. Hold on. Mr. Walker, you appear to be in the bed to me and I need you to get out of the bed. I need you to get out of the bed and go to a table, go sit in a chair, something, but I need you to get out of the bed, Mr. Walker. Okay. Uh, Ms. Stevenson, it's unacceptable that Mr. Little just is showing up for me. He's done nothing. I reinstated his probation in September. Probation has not been able to reach him. Probation has not been able to get in touch with him. He has failed to report monthly um, to probation. He has failed to complete outpatient treatment. He has failed to test twice a month. He has failed to do Narcotics Anonymous. He has failed to do 20 days of community service and he has failed to pay $535. He has failed. His probation is revoked. It was a reinstated probation. It was a reinstated probation. He has shown me that he didn't want his probation reinstated. So I'm revoking it. Your Honor, would the court give Mr. Little an opportunity to demonstrate to the court at least that he doesn't have any, um, that he would test clean? I don't know if we have I, any no, substance abuse I don't, issues I don't remaining. Nope. Um, I don't want him to, retest, to test clean. I wanted him to test clean between September and December. I wanted him to test clean. I wanted him to test. I, I wanted him to participate. I wanted him to put some skin in the game. I wanted him to do something to show me that he was worthy of me reinstating his probation. He has done nothing. I mean zero. I'm talking about zilch. He's done absolutely nothing since I reinstated the probation in September. This is absolutely except, unacceptable. Except make it back down here to the courthouse, Your Ms. Honor. Stevenson, and I'm coming to court is not court. a condition, is not a part of his probation. I'm talking about the probation. Coming yes. to court is coming to court. Every person yes, who is a defendant in a case has a court date. I'm talking about complying with the terms and conditions of the probation that the court has set because we all know that probation is the alternative to jail and jail is the alternative to probation. This defendant, Mr. Little has shown me that he wants the alternative to the probation and that is jail. He has done nothing, zero, zilch. And I know if I call Ms. O'Drisco and ask her for her opinion, she's gonna say, judge, I can't work with him. He, he I, I go ahead and, and put him in jail. He's not a, a candidate for probation. So coming in here, coming to court and, and acting like, oh, that's going that's what all I need to do. No, 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 ab absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, this is uh, Mr. Little uh, on a 2018 case. I, I don't even know how much time he actually still has on a probation. Uh, but he we've been dealing with Mr. Little since 2018. And then he came in to see the court. Uh, well, he was sentenced in, in 2020. So he was sentenced three years ago to 12 months. And here we are in 2024. Right? We, January 2024. <laughs> May he, I? He's done that. Sure, you, you can try, Ms. Stevenson, but I have a a verdict to give so you could try I, I understand your honor and i certainly appreciate the court's frustration with mr little's um lack of compliance utter lack of compliance with this court's order um i don't believe that incarceration is the only um sentence available to this court i would argue that this court does have the power to sentence mr little to a term of probation as a consequence of probation violation and i think that that would give Ms. O'Driscoll and the other staff over 30 sisters report probation, the opportunity to continue to work with Mr. Little, who, Your Honor, unfortunately, I have to say, 
that I have a number of clients who don't even come to court, that if they're not going to do the probation, they follow this court's other instructions. Just don't show up. Mr. Little's not trying to do that. He's not thumbing his nose at this court. He's not being that disrespectful, disrespectful of this court's order. He um, did show up today. And I do believe that that counts Can for I something because he didn't have to do that. And he, he was ordered to, but he didn't have to do that. So I think that that shows that he's trying to do something I know to come in. Trying to keep on talking over me, but you know I'm not gonna allow. I'm not gonna let you. You're gonna try to. I keep didn't hear you, Judge. Oh, I didn't. Hear you. I was like, I'm. A, I mean, I really like you and respect you as a lawyer, but I'm not gonna let you keep talking on me. What you started saying sound like to me when an abuser come and tell their abuse uh, person, uh, "Well, I didn't beat you Wednesday." I I'm I'm mm -hmm. I might have be, I beat you Tuesday I beat you Sunday Monday and Tuesday but I didn't beat you on Wednesday so be grateful and then I might beat you on Thursday that's that's what you sound like with that argument to me he I it, have judge, to try least, something judge and he's here and he's okay, here well, I'm and so I glad he's here Mr uh, Officer Crash you could take him to the back I'll recall his case later okay, thank you you could take him to the back right now. He going to jail for 93 days. That's what's, that's what's going on in my man, mind right now. Judge, you ready to bring him out? I am. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, recalling case number one eight five eight nine nine five zero one, the people versus Dwight Elliott Little, Miss Stevenson. Again, for the record, Your Honor Janice Stevenson appearing on behalf of Mr. Dwight Little. Thank the court for recalling the matter, Mr. Little, sir. Please tell the judge your full name. Dwight Elliott Little. All right, Miss Stevenson. So, Your Honor, I do want the court to know that, um, again, Mr. Little, we were at, we are asking the court to reconsider its decision to incarcerate Mr. Little. Um, we, again, just want the court to know that Mr. Little, you know, though he has handled this probation quite irresponsibly, is not uh, doing so in an effort, again, to disrespect this court. Um, or its orders. Mr. Little does have some significant health concerns, Your Honor. Um, he did complete um, a sobriety program at Share House, Your Honor. Um, and I think sobriety house during the time, during the pendency of this probation. So um, while he apparently has not given proof of that to the probation department, um, I guess it's not completely factual that he has failed to comply with each and every condition of probation, because I do believe that outpatient treatment was ordered by this court or by the pre the sentencing court. So um, really because of the health concerns that Mr. Little has, his vision is failing. He does not have sight in one of his eyes, Your Honor, and is, he's been diagnosed with um, glaucoma, which is compromising the vision in his other eye. He has an appointment with the Kresge Eye Center on this coming Monday, um, hopefully with an effort to save his sight. And I, I know he would like to make that appointment in that we do have the outpatient treatment. His uh, position is that he, has, he did complete outpatient treatment while he was on probation or under sentence for this case. So I think he's taken some steps to try to do what he's supposed to do in terms of this court order. Um, to be frank with the court, Mr. Little did come back to um, come back to court after the capious period because he was trying to relocate to Tennessee where he could live closer to his daughters and his grandchildren. Um, 
And in order to get housing, he would have to clear up any outstanding cases. So he turned himself in. Um, and again, you know, I do, I, I agree with the court. It's the, everybody who has a summons is supposed to come to court. But um, this court knows as well as I do that everybody doesn't honor that summons. They don't comply with those summons. So I think it means something that he's here. I think it means something that he, um, even though he did so kind of with, <laughs> so that he could get a benefit. He did come bring himself back under the jurisdiction of the court, Your Honor. Um, I would ask the court to, um, I don't know, have maybe a little bit better regard for Mr. Little's health than he may be having at this time, Your Honor. Let him they keep those appointments. They have a medical unit at the jail. Yeah, but I don't know if they have an eye specialist. Um, and I know that that's, yeah, I don't know about that. Um, but I know that that's what Kresge does. So they, I'd ask they have to, eye specialists. They get eye specialists, feet specialists. The doctor come in and see all the people at the jail. But let me just say this. Get there. Let mm -hmm. me say this. Ms. Mr. Um, Little, I mean, I don't believe a word Ms. Stevenson is saying in terms of, I know that's what you told her, but you, you, you did, you, and well, I shouldn't say I don't believe a word of what she's saying because she did say in all honesty and then she told me some stuff that is true. You came in here for a selfish reason. That's like somebody, you know, um, inviting you to dinner at the place that they want to eat at and they got a two for one coupon. They, they didn't do that for nothing for you. They did that for themselves and then probably because they didn't want to eat alone, they just invited you to come along. Right. So I don't really I'm one of the most compassionate people around. Now, sometimes people don't think it, but you know me, I don't care what people think um, per se about me, um, but I'm one of the most compassionate people around. I wouldn't want to spend a second in jail. I wouldn't even want them to take me back there behind that gray door. I wouldn't want to spend a second in jail. I have had to tour jails based upon my work and I didn't like it, right? I, I didn't like it. I didn't want to do it. Um, so I wouldn't want to put you in jail, especially for a person who potentially still has a substance abuse problem, but I will. And then I know defense counsel, they make those arguments about, well, judge, look, at least they showed up. Well, so what? You don't get a plus for, for, for coming and doing what you're supposed to do. You're the one with a case. You're the one. You're the one. If I just showed up to work and didn't do any work, and then when it was time for them to fire me, uh, when I'm uh, before the Supreme Court and I say, well, at least I showed up, what you think they're going to say? But well, we don't care that you showed up and occupied a seat. Uh, sir, I don't care that you showed up. I don't care that you showed up under the risk of going to jail. I don't care because the next time we arrest you, if you didn't show up, the next time we arrest you, one day, we're going to get you. Eventually, it, you're going to get arrested. And then when you get arrested, the fact that you didn't show up will be a penalty to you. It don't benefit you to show up. You're supposed to show up. Your name is on the docket. It's some people whose names are on the docket. They didn't show up. Well, they're going to have a warrant out for their arrest. And when the police arrest them, if the police get around to arresting them before they die, then they just going to be in jail when they get arrested. You're not doing me any favor showing up. You're not doing me any favor addressing your uh, substance abuse issue. You're not doing me any favor. Only way you could be doing me a favor is if we both on the road at the same time. And so the fact that you addressing your substance abuse will prevent you from killing me in a drunk driving accident. But you're the one. You're the one that was drinking and driving. You're the one that has a substance abuse problem. You're the one that showed up and said, hey, judge, give me another chance. You're the one that did that. You didn't have to come here. But you did it for a selfish reason. You could have waited until we arrested you. You could have waited until they found you. But, but it was selfish the reason you showed up. But guess what? That doesn't mean you don't have to do the, 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 the time for your crime. Just because you think you graced us with your presence. And so now, Judge, I mean, I came. So therefore, I shouldn't have to do none of this. Well, then stay gone. 
until we arrest you, until we find you, until we hunt you down, until you get stopped at the stop at the, at the thing for running a stop sign or for being in a car with somebody that ran a stop sign and then they run your name. One of the things I used to enjoy as a young judge, I don't pretty much, I don't want people going to jail now, but I, it just used to kind of, I don't know, do something to me when somebody was on their way somewhere important. Somewhere like the first day of their job or the, the job interview or to the daughter's wedding and they get stopped by the police and get arrested. I don't know why that used to just, I used to be like, that's no better for you. You should have came in when you supposed to come in. So the the there's no reward for showing up, but there is a penalty for not showing up. Mr. Little, if I wasn't going to give you another chance, I wouldn't have wasted my breath right here. But let me say this to you. Grace and mercy have their bags packed. Grace and mercy, the bags are packed. They out there by the door. And um, the only reason they on the inside of the door because Officer Crafts keeps the, the courtroom door closed. If, if he was holding that courtroom door open, Grace and Mercy would have left out that room. So you on your last leg. You're the one that asked me for another opportunity. You're the one that said I wanted to do the probation. You're the one. Well, let me say this. They have a medical unit at the jail. Now, whether they're going to give you glaucoma surgery or not, I don't know. Whether they're going to let you go blind while you're in there, I don't know. Whether they're going to be able to, whether the, the service at the jail is, is on par with the Kresge Institute, I don't know. Some of the doctors at the Kresge Institute might volunteer at the jail. That's not my business. That's, that's not my business. That's not something I know. That's not something I keep up with. That's the business of the sheriff. That's, that's Raphael Washington's business. But that ain't Lanise Bryant's business. And Lanise Bryant, ain't gonna, she, does, she doesn't care. Now, we're going to call across the hall. And you're going to make an appointment to see uh, Jennifer O'Driscoll. If you miss one appointment, if you miss one drug test, if you miss giving some papers and, and proof and information to Miss O'Driscoll, if you fail to report on a monthly basis as you have been ordered to do, if you fail to submit to your analysis as you have been ordered to do, if you fail to complete this community service as you have been ordered to do, I am going to revoke your probation. You are going to go to jail for 93 days. And then after you finish your 93 days, you can go live wherever you want to live in the whole wide world. But you're going to stop this foolishness and you're going to stop wasting my time saying that you want to get off, get do the probation so you can go get some housing. So that's what it is. Uh, I'm going to give them a, a two month review date. We'll see what Miss O'Driscoll say, if she can verify this treatment that he allegedly did. If she, And let me say something to you. Do not try to use the fact that you're losing your sight to say you can't do community service. We have a blind Michigan Supreme Court justice and he show up for work all the time. We have a blind Michigan Supreme Court justice that run marathons. He, he runs marathons. So do not try to say I have glaucoma, therefore I can't do community service. Oh yes, you can, you don't need no, you don't need sight to answer a telephone. Now you need hearing but you don't need sight. You don't need sight to do a lot of things that they're going to have you do. So there is community service available even for those who have a sight problem. Now, either you want to do the probation or you don't. Either you want to take your chances getting arrested or you don't. But I'm not going to do this with you again. This is your final chance. You've done nothing since I gave you that second chance. You, I gave you a second chance and you crapped on me. I gave you a second chance and you still didn't do anything. I'm, I'm talking about nothing. But okay, well, let me take it back. Miss Stevenson claimed that, that, that you did 
some treatment. So let me take that back. So we're going to verify the treatment. And we're going to, I don't know how he still has a $534 balance, Mr. Flanagan. So let's, let's go to that. I mean, you could, we could look into that right there. I don't know how he still has a $530 case balance if I gave him 20 days of community service in lieu of fines and costs. So at the at the most, it seems to me that he should only have a $210 balance. Those would be the mandatory costs. So just look into that. We're not going to vet it out on the record, but we are going to, uh, Officer Krabs, you're going to um, escort Mr. Little to probation. I don't know if Miss Odrisco is available uh, to see him today. I don't know if she is not because it's a drop in. It's a you know he just dropping in. Um. Then um. He has to just make an appointment. So you could let the people know at the desk. He needs to see Miss O'Drisco or just he needs an appointment if she's not available today. The judge has given him another piece of grace and mercy. Yeah. And now he just needs to follow through because this next time, I don't care if your surgery is going to be scheduled for the next day. You're not going to have that surgery. Anything further? All right, doesn't seem like there's anything further. Let's give um, him another date. Um, I said two months. This is January, February, March. So let me look at my March calendar. And, and don't don't do me like that, uh, uh, Mr. Little. If you're not going to do the probation, just say I don't want to do that. Let's, let's do something else. Because because uh, then I'm saying I keep giving you chances and you won't take them. Uh, what about, it looks like I have reviews on March 14th at 1.30. Mr. Flanagan? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor, three. Okay, we got four now. We're going to put Mr. Um, Little on February, strike that, sorry, March 14th. At 1.30 p.m., he could come in person or he could come on Zoom. Um, but know this, even if you come on Zoom and I say I'm going to put you in jail, I'm going to send the police to your house. Uh, so don't don't act like because uh, you come on Zoom, I can't find you because I can. I'm, I am send the police to get you if I say I'm going to put you in jail. So just know that either the Detroit police, Chief White or the Wayne County Sheriff, uh, Raphael Washington. I, I have both of their phone numbers I got. So don't don't act don't think I won't find you. Anything further? Um other than thank you very, very, very much, Your Honor. I don't um I don't, I don't have anything further. Uh, Mr. Little, do you want to say anything to the judge? Like thank you. I just want to tell you that I'm I'm gonna do everything I can to finish this to go I'll be 71 on the 13th of March. And, uh, that ain't old. 71, what that mean? It's, uh, I mean, Betty White was 90 and she was still working, 99. Uh, Let me tell you something about me, uh, Miss Little. Excuses are not something I even allow yeah. to come into my mind. I don't need to allow no excuses. 71, that don't, what, age is a number. It's what we do with the age. It's what we do with it. But go go ahead. I interrupted you. Uh, I was only speaking that uh, what I've been through in the seventy one seventy years that I've been living, I've been living I've been making all efforts to change. You know, I mean, you started back from the church. I'm saying this, my efforts to change uh, <clears throat> it brought about some different things in my life. You know, I have some difficulties. I have some problems, but. Uh, everybody does. And I can only do better, try to do better than what I have done. And you are absolutely right. Mr. Little, that is absolutely and exactly right. And the only thing that I tell people 
This is the only thing I tell people. Sometimes, Miss Mr. Little, you are exactly right. That is that is exactly right. That is correct. Um, and but the only thing is, sometimes people, when they get ready to turn their life around, um, the one thing they don't sometimes they don't anticipate or think about or understand or accept that even though I'm turning my life around, it may be some things that I did previously when I wasn't trying to turn my life around that I now have to make penance for. So just because I'm turning my life around, I want to be a good person. I want to do the right things. Some of that could include paying some penalties for some things that I did. And if a person is really committed to changing, they're going to be okay with paying penance for the things that they did. So that means even though you're trying to turn your life around and it may be hard because now you've built up some stuff, you build up some stuff, right? And Mr. Little, I want you to go live wherever you want to live. I want you to be successful on this probation. I want you to be. But when you show up and you haven't done anything, that tells me I want it more for you than you want for yourself. And one thing <clears throat> that I determined for, for moving forward after I came back to work uh, uh, off of my leave uh, in uh, December, I think I came back December 6th, I said, I got to protect my own peace of mind. And so I cannot want for other people's stuff more than they want for themselves. I'll be on this on here fighting for the people. Come on, you could do it. You could. Why won't you do it? Why won't? Oh, I'm not doing that no more. I'm just going to say, OK, you don't want to do it. You go to jail. You don't want to be a better person. OK, go to jail. You don't want to do. So I think you want to do it, but you have to put the effort into it. Uh, because otherwise, you know. Miss Little, I'm sorry. You're gonna have to go to jail at the age of 71, and that'll be bold. That's that won't be right. Okay. Yes. And I don't want you to, cause I don't. I don't and I, your pastor, he might try to come on here and say, give him a chance and stuff, and then I'm gonna hate to not listen to him because I will, um, and tell him how many chances I gave you. But we in it together until we're not. <laughs> we in it together as long as we're together. But when I'm in it by myself, we're no longer in it at all. Okay. So let's see what you can do in two months. Let's see if you can we can get that proof and then we'll be good. Take them across the hall. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh I had one question, John. Would I yeah. turn in my uh certificate of completion from you know drug program from Shell House and uh Friday House? Right, you got to get on to me. You got to give them to your probation officer. That's why you're supposed to report to probation on a monthly basis. Okay, okay so you got to give them to Miss O'Driscoll, and so we're gonna you're gonna go over there if she's able to see you today. But if not, it's a couple of things. Oh, because let me say this to you in in the report, and I, and Miss Stevenson, she'll make sure that we get this. Miss O'Driscoll listed two addresses that they have sent letters to. And she said they did not get any response. You need to make sure probation has your current address and current phone number. So you and your lawyer, you're gonna make sure that my clerk and the probation department has your current address and your current phone number. Okay? Yes. All right. So, and then you'll give all that information to Miss O'Driscoll, the probation officer, and then she'll, she'll send me another report. She sent me a report every time you every time you on the docket, I get a report as to how you're doing. OK. All right. Thank you. All right. You're welcome, Mr. Little. Don't let don't let me mess up your day. You have an amazing day. You have a fantastic day. You have a fabulous day. Don't let me mess up your day. You still have a great day today. OK. Yes, All right. All right. She ended up talking herself down. <laughs> the more she talked to him, the more she got it all out, the, the more gentle she became. And yeah, maybe he should go to jail, but he's an older man. He's got health issues. I don't know. I feel for people like that. I, I have a heart for people like that. So in my mind, 
I, I kind of am glad he he's getting another chance. Hopefully, he will do what he needs to do. That's what I hope. Thank you guys all so very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.